Hi, my name is David Pearson, and I am a medical physicist at the University of Toledo in the Radiation Oncology Department. I'm currently the program director for uh, the Radiation Therapy Medical Physics Residency, but I'm also involved in the graduate program. I often get asked a question, how do I become a medical physicist? So the purpose of this presentation will be to try to answer that question, how do, how do you become a medical physicist um, in, in the United States? Uh, I'm specifically going to talk about how to become a medical physicist in radiation oncology, uh, but I will mention that there are other pathways and try and give us little inform uh, some information about that. So to talk about um, how do you become a medical physicist, we're going to break this talk down into a couple of different sections. The first section is going to be how do you get into a graduate program, because a graduate program is going to be where uh, medical physics training starts. Uh, we'll talk about how uh, graduate programs are not specialized. They're intended to train you how to become um, a medical physicist very broadly, but not specialize into any specific area. Um, we'll talk about uh, things like clinical rotations and the th kind of things that you might be expected to do as a graduate student. And then we'll talk about residency. And then residency is where you're going to actually get special clinical training, um, although not everybody is going to need that. So we'll, we'll talk about the uh, different career paths and alternatives to going into the clinic and becoming a clinical physicist. In order to get accepted into a Camp Ep accredited graduate program, um, it's, uh, you will first of all have to do a degree at an undergraduate level. Uh, now, ideally, this degree should be a physics degree. Um, that will give you the best chance of being accepted into the majority of graduate programs in the US. But it does not have to be a, a, a degree in physics. Uh, you could, for example, do a degree in nuclear engineering and be accepted into a Camp Ep accredited graduate program. Uh, the Camp Ep standards for accepting someone into a degree program are that the applicant must have, uh, an, uh, have a strong foundation in physics um, and it should be the undergraduate degree should be at least equivalent to a minor in physics. So again, ideally a major in physics, but um, you can be accepted with, a mi with, with something equivalent to a minor in, in physics. Um, now, I mentioned that Camp Ep accreditation. CAMPEP is the Commission on Accreditation for Medical Physics Education Programs, and basically CAMPEP sets the standard for all of the uh, medical physics graduate programs, and they set down a bunch of guidelines and rules that programs need to follow in their uh, in their education format. So a two-year, for example, a two-year uh, graduate program for a master's degree um, would be, would be uh, CAMPEP accredited. Uh, and that's going to become important because if you want to be accepted into a residency, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, you're going to need to have graduated from an accredited program uh, from Camp Ed. Let's talk a little bit now about the different types of graduate programs. Uh, there are essentially three basic groups of medical physics graduate programs. The first uh, that I'm going to talk about is a two year master's degree, uh, an MS in medical physics. Um, there are a number of programs around the country that offer um, a master's degree in medical physics. Um, the second degree is going to be a, a DMP, a Doctor of Medical Physics. Typically, this is a four-year program uh, that cons consists of something similar to the two-year master's degree program, um, but also includes two years of clinical training that will fulfill the requirement for a residency. And then the final type of degree program is going to be the PhD in medical physics. Um, Sometimes these degrees are actually PhDs in physics um, with uh, a, a concentration in medical physics. Uh, the University of Toledo, for example, uh, offers uh, the master's degree and, um, and has a PhD program as well, both of which are Camp Ep accredited. Uh, we, do not, we do not have a, a DMP program. There are actually only a handful of DMP programs around the country, um, but we'll talk about it a little bit because it, it, it may be of interest uh, to you if you're considering the different types of uh, graduate education. Um, basically, what it comes down to, the difference between these three, is um, what exactly your expectations are after you finish the graduate degree. If you expect to go into academia and you maybe would like to teach uh, medical physics uh, at, a, at an institution similar to where you learn medical physics, then maybe the best choice for you is going to be the PhD. 
um, if you're interested in doing research and um, publishing information that's going to guide medical physicists in the future, then again, maybe the PhD is correct for you. But it's not, it's not the best choice for everybody. Uh, the downside of doing a PhD is obviously the extra time. Um, PhDs will typically take four, uh, five, six, seven years. Um, they, they don't necessarily have an end, a fixed endpoint because it's going to be dependent on how well your research goes. Um, a PhD requires you to do um, unique research uh, that is going to uh, advance the field of medical physics. Um, so it's not, it's not going to be for everyone because of that extra time. So let's talk a little bit about an alternative like a master's degree program and who, who would be uh, most appropriate to, appropriate to do a master's degree. Uh, a master's degree is for people that uh, ideally would like to work in the clinic uh, and, and don't, work, don't care so much about whether there's going to be teaching or research um, expectations of them. So for example, a lot of master's degree students will um, complete the degree, um, go, go off and do a residency, uh, a residency program, and then start working in a clinic. Um, so if you're interested in becoming a medical physicist in the absolute shortest possible time, uh, a master's degree is one of the options. The, the, the final option is going to be that DMP program that we talked about. Um, it's hard to really classify exactly what kind of education you're going to get here, but it's going to be somewhere similar to a master's degree, maybe a little bit slightly more advanced. Um, and it comes with the, it, it comes embedded in the program that you will do the two years of clinical training that you would get from a residency. So some people will think of it as being a two-year two master's degree plus a residency. Um, so this sounds like a great idea. Why get accepted into a master's degree program when you're going to need to do a residency afterwards when you could just do all of this in one go? Um, well, the downside is essentially that residency is usually paid. Most residents in the US uh, in the field of medical physics will get a salary of somewhere in the range of about 50,000 US dollars. If you complete your residency requirements as part of a graduate program like the DMP, you will probably not get paid for those two years um, that you could be a resident. So although you are actually being accepted into a program that has a guaranteed residency, um, ultimately you are going to be paying that for that residency out of your own pocket. So again, it's going to be uh, pros and cons. The advice that I give my students is if they believe that they are very competitive for a residency program, they would be better off completing the master's degree program and then going into the, into the residency uh, separately. Um, if they're not 100% sure whether they're, very, they're a competitive applicant, um, then maybe a, DM pro, a, a DMP program is, uh, is appropriate because you'll get that guarantee of a residency. Um, again, there's not really any um, single piece of advice that, that the, the students can, then can tell. Uh, maybe the best thing to do is to talk to people at residency programs around the country, sorry, to uh, graduate programs around the country. Talk to some people in a master's degree if you're interested in doing a DMP. Talk to some PM, people in a DMP. And definitely talk to some people in a residency about um, their transition from graduate school to residency. Now we're going to talk a little bit here about residency programs. But before we get into residency programs, let's talk about who, um, who needs residency and who does not. Um, residency programs are going to be a requirement for people that are going to be working in a clinic. If you want to work in a clinic as a medical physicist and maybe you're going to be the only medical physicist in the clinic or maybe you want to be the person that's responsible for patients in the clinic, then you're going to need to go to a CAMPEP accredited residency program. Unless, of course, you went through that previously mentioned DMP program that had the residency built in. But if you want to work in a clinic and you want to become board certified in radiation therapy, then you're going to need a residency program. So let's stop and ask ourselves, well, then who, who would not want to do that? Um, there are, of course, jobs for medical physicists that are not in the clinic. Um, we, work, we work with vendors. Uh, we work with uh, companies that produce radiation therapy products. And often they need to have medical physicists in order to be able to design, um, to research, um, or to uh, service those products. And so someone with a degree in um, medical physics, maybe the master's degree in medical physics, uh, maybe at a very upper echelon position, a PhD or a DMP in medical physics, um, those people are going to be needed by the industry. 
And if you're working in industry and you're not directly responsible for the care of patients, then you don't need to do a residency program. It also means that you don't need to become board certified. And board certified is not a one-time test that, that will allow you to become board certified forever. Um, board certification is a constant process. Once certified, you need to continuously re-educate yourself and retest yourself um, every few years. And so um, to, one way to avoid that rather rigorous process is to not work in the clinic. Now, when it comes to the salary of the different people working in the clinic versus working in industry, um, I can't really give you too much information as um, who is going to get paid what. I can only really talk about what what um, um, who get what you can expect to be paid if you work in a radiation therapy clinic, but that's only a small piece of the puzzle. Um, so I'm not going to try and go into the, the details of that too much. Um, I will mention that residents themselves will likely be paid. Um, the vast majority of residencies in the US for medical physicists um, are paid positions. Um, a typical salary would be of the order of $50,000, but if you'd like to know more information about that, the information can generally be found on the internet. Um, people that are interested in going into residency will often refer to a Google document online, which is a spreadsheet of many of the programs in the the, that are running in the residency and offering jobs. Um, you can find lots of interest in details about those residency positions within that Google document. Um, and that information often includes uh, how many positions they have available each year and also how much those residents get paid. Uh, as mentioned, it's about $50,000, but that's just a kind of an average and um, there will be programs that get paid significantly more than that, maybe because they're in a place that's got a very high cost of living and there may be programs that cannot afford to pay that kind of money. Um, so residency, again, is a requirement for those that are interested in, in going into the clinic. Once you've completed the residency program, um, in radiation therapy, you could expect to earn about $150,000 in, in 2023. Um, this is based on, on salaries for students and residents that have graduated from, uh, from my program um, or from programs that, I've, that I'm aware of. Uh, and so we can fairly reliably say that at least um, people working in the Eastern or Central United States can expect a, a starting salary straight out of residency of about $150,000. Now that's for people with um, typically a two year master's degree plus a two year residency. And that would be your expected starter salary. It will be a little bit higher, although not a lot higher if you have a PhD and possibly a DMP. Um, but just because you have a more advanced degree does not necessarily you mean you're going to command a much higher salary. It's not necessarily going to be worth uh, the additional time. At least not, it, you're certainly not going to get a return on investment within the first few years. So to briefly summarize, in order to become a medical physicist in the US um, or in North America, you're going to need to complete a graduate program that is CAMPAP accredited that could be a two-year master's degree program or it could be a longer DMP or PhD. The vast majority of people are going to do a master's degree or, or a PhD because there are not that many DMP programs. Um, following the graduate degree, um, the vast majority of people are going to, if they wish to go work in a clinic, um, they're going to need to do a residency program. Uh, residency programs uh, tend to be more, they, well, they are for sure more specialized. Uh, they are for people that have chosen a speciality, whether it be radiation therapy or another field. Um, and then following a two year, uh, two year or possibly longer, some, there are some three year residences. Uh, following that, they will be able to work and become board certified. Uh, I'll probably do another video on, on the process of becoming board certified because I think that's a, an interesting topic just on its own. Um, but that is going to be the goal for people that work in the clinic. If anyone has any questions about this, you can reach out to me. Uh, I, am I am available via email. Um, you can, you can uh, find, my, find me by just Googling me or you can use the email address that's listed here. Uh, I'm currently at the University of Toledo where we do have a graduate program, the two-year master's degree program. Uh, we also offer a PhD program and we have a residency. Um, probably the most unique thing about our graduate program is that the vast majority of our residents uh, are graduates of our own graduate program. 
Uh, that's a useful thing to look for when you're looking for different graduate programs. If you can find a place where you can do graduate, uh, graduate studies and they will help you find a residency, then that's definitely, uh, that's definitely an appealing uh, part of this process. Um, so please feel free to follow us on Twitter or on uh, or look at more of our YouTube videos. Uh, I hope this has been helpful and I hope to see you all again soon.